Well, good evening. It's uh, Friday again. Another week's gone by. And what a lot's happened in this uh, last last week. Um, last Friday was celebrating winning Premier Gold and runner-up to Best in Show at Harrogate Flower Show. Uh, regaining my FIM Championship for 3 for 3 FIMs. Yippee! It's just gone. We've had Storm Alley, which has caused so much devastation across the country. And I look and think how lucky we've been. The giants are still standing. There's some damage in places. Um, the sycamore trees just in the back there had three or four great big branches, six inch girth torn off the tree. Um, yeah, these are still standing upright and still flower on them. Um, yes, we lost the covers on these were only temporary structures so uh, just a shame really because there was so much starting to flower still inside because I'm late with the giant as I keep mentioning them. Um, one at the back still standing just that was a new sheet this year um, this one was bigger sheets that had been on from last year so maybe they deteriorated a little bit um, and the worst problem I've got is that the a long 90 foot tunnel that we had up the back there which in all honesty was due for replacing this year because it's been the skin's been on for about six years um, I haven't got an option now because that's gone so I was just going to do a, a quick look through where we're at um, with the trials on one bit and then depending on time maybe do a sort of like a part two obviously a lot of things have passed the best now but there's still varieties that have been that are just coming on just our timing um, so everybody's been talking about the pink gold crest lismore gold crest shearwell and oakwood and how different they are um, that's the bed of them um, and certainly the thing with a pink gold crest is that the flower ages the color does go from like more of peach to taking on like a pink flunch flush as can be seen on on that bloom there so ignore the state of them now they've been hammered by you know even though this is covered they've had all the winds blown through here and i'm surprised to see them still standing um, the oak would go crest the bright yellow and then followed by that with um, the Lismore gold crest which is uh, Bill Franklin's now yeah they're a bit short they were late planted these were uh, didn't have a great choice of stock putting these out I don't know why I never managed to get enough done um, but looking looking nice Going along the bed, um, variety of this small semi cactus. It is quite large, though, I think. This is um, Allen's Gold from Andrew Allen. It's coming really just past sort of full flush and a few flowers still coming. One way I like it, problem it's got here is the size that it actually gets to. Okay, that bloom's blown now. But it does let, get, get a little bit untidy once you get into the middle of it there. Um, might have to just still try it again though and maybe try and get a few more up on it here we have uh, Barbary Jester just starting to flower the plants have made good height just a little bit late and really nice sort of spiralling when you get the right angle on it which you can see there right this here is a seedling of um, Phil Godsmark's Rycroft E2 um, which we only managed to plant half a dozen plants out of it um, got a really rich vibrant um, orange colour like an orange gold I suppose um, definitely going to grow this again next year and see how it performs given a little bit more care classification wise 
what we're looking at on this one. You know, there's a petal from halfway down the bloom. You know, so although slightly pointed, is that going to be small ball? It certainly looks more like the formation of it. I think that argu argument's going to rage on a lot of varieties for a while. Uh, then Gordon Hodgson's uh, Westerton Sunset. Which really like the colour of this one, really rich. Um, there's a petal from halfway down that, much more deck like petal and more pointed at the end. And then the odd plant that I got mixed up, unfortunately. Um, I didn't read the labels properly when I planted them, a mistake we maybe all do. Um, this is Westerton Pearl. Now that is a true small ball beautiful color really good formation as we're expecting in from all of Gordon's seedlings now now this is the white hill crest candy sport that we have um, got all the vigor that we associated with candy in its best days good five foot blooms really good flowers these are a good sort of seven, eight inches across. Um, these have been in a, didn't quite get under the covers. They've never been covered. So these are a bit in the open. Uh, not a new variety, this one, but it's stock of coral Jupiter from, uh, from Gordon Hodgson. Um, Jupiters have been out for a while. I think his stock's hard maintaining the standards with it. But certainly Gordon's Coral Jupiter brings back all the formation and the colour and the, that we expected from the Jupiters when they were at the best, I think. Uh, Kraken blooms almost like 12 inches across these. This has to be one of the varieties of the year. Uh, Rycroft Helen that Andrew Robinson's grown so well. Um, we've got a few under covers and seen how well they do. And I'm quite pleased with what we're getting off that. And then just a few of my fims here. Can't resist just walking past those. The Normandy, Normandy wedding day. Um, Normandy frills. And the one that's been catching everybody's eyes today. We've had people from, um, from Surrey, from Somerset, um, from, oh, oh, about five or six different places that are more than 150 miles away. Can't remember. Some cases just call them by chance because they've been recommended to some of, uh, I don't know one, one couple that's flown up from Bristol to see some friends, but the destination was to come and see us. Um, a bit of an honour, that really, a bit of a privilege. Well, the furthest allows one of all. Um, this is the AC Shiitake, uh, really tall. It's uh, probably coming out on the screen there's a tan colour, about six foot. Don't think we'll be growing that one again. And why is it when you want to do some video and or some photograph and the best blooms are facing the other way or on the other side of the pathway? Um, bad planning maybe. <laughs> um, Brycroft Gladiator. Bill Gods marks white medium deck. Might come to back to that when I walk up the other side I think um, but that's at least you can see how clean they are on the back and then we have the rich dark of Kenora Mac up B so dark it's not even showing up I think it's just a black shadow there 
And here we have one of the most talked about dailies of this year, I think the medium deck Mary Margaret Row. Um, I've grown few, too many up on these, so the flowers aren't particularly big, but there's still plenty center in there, and the blooms is right back. Um, I should have stripped these out, because I think these are looking as if I've left them go about 10 up. Um, but a stunning variety, I just wished I'd um, stopped them all earlier. And then my favorite, shouldn't really say that, should I? Um, having a favorite new variety. Um, it's just because I like the Fims, this Normandy Delight, it's done very well for me. The Fim Championship at Harrogate was a 24 point vase. Um, relative to the Fim Championship really, I suppose, and nothing else. But we have agreement with John Willett that we can add that to our list for 2018-19. So it will be getting updated on the website soon. And we'll also be including it in our main catalogue when we get that printed. I just wanted to come round and focus in on this, uh, this one bloom. Well, so there's plenty of depth to that there. And there's no dampening off or no marking which some people associate with the fins. Um, yeah, that's just, just shadow up there. It's not dampening. And it's got this lovely delicate pinkish tinge to the middle. And then again, not a new variety, but Nenakazi. Um, thank you, Jack Gott, for sending me a tuber of that. And also thank you to Raymond Duffy for sending me a couple of plants of Habit Champagne, which is a big fim. I just whipped round the other side of the net to get this bloom. Because there's my hand there, and that's quite a size bloom that. Lovely delicate shades though, of like peachy pink with a, a lemon centre, excuse me. Then a few that are still coming out was Jacob's Desire and then some Edna C there. Um, Dave Reed's Barless and Beauty, um, which is this lovely orange one. Being a, a net that sort of caught the wind a little bit too much as it's come whipping through. What we're passing now is Asquith Josephine. Uh, which is the late Ernie Corkwell's variety, medium deck, the creamy white. You know, when we come to grow on our dahlias, I'm not playing around with numbers of stems or intricacies of feeding and giving them particular formats of formulations or any treat, special treatment they just get stuck out the six and a half thousand of them and they all virtually get done the same way um, you know so it is quite nice to see how some of these blooms do develop and it is bearing in mind where we are late September and it's on the edge there that variety is staying very clean on the back of the flower there and that's got quite good depth on it um, whether it'll take off again I don't know um, but I'm certainly going to continue doing something with that then we have on the left here come a little bit small but it's because I haven't restricted it enough um, is Eastwood Kudos um, from John Sharp Allowed too many to come up on that one to get the best out of it.
And then the other one of uh, John's that we have at the end of the bed here is Eastwood Bard. Um, which the light's sun on there is not going to make it easy for me to photograph that one. Not photograph it, video it. But that's a, a big flower. Um, definitely, I think, uh, an, a large semi cactus as opposed to a medium semi cactus. That. Um, and then this has been popular with people today that have been looking. This again is um, one of Ernie Corkwell's, which is Ask with Edna. Oh, I can't get that where it's easy to see the colour of it. Sorry. Um, could do with some shading behind me, I think. There we go. Do it that way. Good, nice, upright plant. Attractive colour blooms. Um, a bicolour or a blend? Definitely a deck. There's not much to see on the on the giants that we're trying out in all honesty because they have got a bit hammered with the wind um, but we've got one or two blooms of of lemon top coming out now which is named after an ice cream from Presitos, Presitos at Red Car Sue's favorite ice cream as she says there's only one thing better and then a Pesitos ice cream, Le Pesitos lemon top, and that's two Pesitos lemon top. <laughs> so yeah, a bit interesting actually. I'd like to see that as a full bloom. I know maybe some people would say they wouldn't. Lula Patty, late flowering. Must remember this one to stop it really early, because that's the biggest bud we've got. Um, then we have a one that was looking very promising before the covers got ripped but I will grow it again uh, which is Gabby Hayes variety Millie a large deck blush large deck um, did get a picture of a bloom like last night and I'm not going to get around to put some covers back on this just for a few weeks um, so we'll try that next year and remember to stop it a little bit earlier I say this is where it gets a little bit devastating because the Bonaventure that was looking so good and the Sherwell Gemma that had virtually three quarter open flowers on has just been shredded unfortunately. Um, Tony Sherwell Heather which is down here is just I thought this looked quite promising last year. It's an unusual colour, like a dusky pink, but naturally very late flower. But saying that, so is my Brinterfell. It's about the same timing as those, so it need to be done earlier. This was Sherwell Peach, absolutely ripped apart. As was my Steve Megos. But you've still got a couple of good blooms of. Um, Amari Gold about. Jubilee Boy's been shredded. 